guys welcome to the first documentary um we're going to call it a documentary because we're going to look into flounder fishing from start until finish so everything it takes to go flounder fishing really for me um this isn't for everyone this isn't for fishing everywhere in the country because some places like Port Arbor, you can just go to the tackle shop buy half a pound of rag as that's how they sell it and and go fishing the arbor and catch some monsters but for us on the medway um and around the southeast coast um maddies are the best they're the top bait um so today i've come down here i'm at motney hill everybody knows this place so i'm not giving away any secret spots as you can see it's like a ploughed field um everyone digs their maddies um and they get small lugworm here but they're just they're not worth digging a lot of people do but i don't think they're worth digging out and around there you can see the power stations up on the other side of the river over at who and places like that um but yeah to be honest the, the tide is in here for probably about two hours on the tide and that's it it's gone again as you can see it's a it's a big flat um and there's nothing on it but right <clears throat> anyway so in this documentary video if you like i will be showing you how to dig maddies um where to dig maddies not that you have to come to Montney Hill or anywhere but I mean if you live in an estuary anywhere there's a bit of mud um, you can find maddies pretty much anywhere um, so yeah I'm going to show you how to dig maddies how to pick them up um, I'll show you how to keep them at home for a couple of days um, and then I'm going to show you how to make the rigs that we use and then we're going to go fishing and we're going to go and catch some flanders hopefully um, so yeah bear with us um, well bear with me i think i'm probably out flounder fishing tomorrow with mike so i'm now starting today digging a few maddies and then i say tonight i shall show you the rigs we use or i use for them um nothing i do is expert and um and how it has to be done it's just the way i do it and the way things work for me obviously everybody everybody does things different but yeah i'm just showing you the way i'll do it right i'll bring you back when i found my maddie spot and i'll start turning some mud over in a bit Right, just a quick one guys, I brought you back. Um, if, you are, if you've never dug maddies before, um, it's probably best to go somewhere where it's quite safe. I mean, standing in all these rocks is fine, but as soon as I walk out there on that, that flat of mud, it gets a lot, lot softer. Um, and also, again, with places like this that get dug quite a lot by anglers for bait, there's holes everywhere, because there's only so much filling in you can do, you fill in your holes and it, it's, it's never ever solid again. Um, but the, the biggest telltale sign for maddies are just this is just a quick you can see that mud there in between them rocks you see all the little holes all the little pinprick holes now that means maddies are there so anywhere where you find them holes look, there's, there's more holes there there are now don't get me wrong there are places with more maddies in than others but if you come down here with a fork you'll always find a few not just here but i mean there's i dig all over the place because the thing is you, you dig you keep digging in one area and you just dig it out and then you can't dig there no more so let me just show you i'm digging the place i like to dig from is not so much out in the middle you see this sea wall here um it's, it's like a concrete structure now maddie's also like to live under rocks as well so if you turn a rock if you move a rock out of the way if i can move it under there, see him? He's just gone back in his hole. There he is, there. There's the Maddie. Let me see if I can pull him out. Nice and gently. And there he is, see? They live under the rocks. Now you could probably go along here and turn a few rocks over and pick out enough to go fishing. Um, I've already started digging, I've got a few in there. Let me just put that rock back. Um, but, yeah, I like to dig by a concrete structure because it's where I find they they sort of hang out. I've got a few places where I can dig up against the concrete wall um, and it normally works out all right for me. But as you can see, this ground hasn't ever been dug or not in the last year or so. All you want, I'm trying to do this with a... With, trying to dig with one hand is our work. Let me get a fork full there. So there's my fork full of dirt. And I can already see the maddies. And then all I'll do is put it on my pile, turn it over. Now that was a bad, that was a bad haul that one. But there's a Maddie. Oh, focus phone. There's one. Now, it may look like really, really, let me just use my other hand, hang on guys, because I've got one dirty hand and I always try and keep one clean. Um, it, it is dirty work. It's not the best. A lot of people will be sitting there thinking, oh, I can't be bothered out, I'll just go and buy them. But the fact of the matter is, down here, no tackle shop sell them because the diggers don't want to dig them because they're a pain in the rear end. Um, that's a nice one. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's that's a good one. They, they, they don't get massive. You can you can obviously pick up the odd good one, but not very often. Yeah, I'm a bit further back. The problem I've got here as well is I'm trying to dig out the rocks. 
that's in my way and I'm trying to film and do it with one hand god I need to get a GoPro right guys I think you get the gist I need to get off this phone and dig some maddies um, yeah this is really horrid ground right listen I'll bring you back when I finish digging maddies for me it'll probably be about an hour for you it'll be a second in a bit right guys I've dug enough maddies now I think for me and Mike for a couple of hours tomorrow there's um oh the bucket's gone brittle and it's breaking oh pants it doesn't look like a lot but there's a there's a couple of hundred in there some nice size ones too um focus phone that's it um so that should be absolutely ideal um just quickly run over a few things um remember know where you're going don't walk out in the mud and get stuck um potentially die after waste the rnl's time or the fire brigade or whatever um look for the holes in the dirt in the mud um let's see if i can find some to show you yeah like there you can see little pinprick holes in that there's only a few but all this has all been churned over another top tip don't dug don't dig where someone's already dug and you'll be able to tell that i mean i've just i've done i've dug all this here i've filled in all my holes chucked all the mud back and hopefully it'll thing but this was this was virgin ground if you like and it's a lot easier to sift through the dirt and through the mud once it's been thingy because if you dig somewhere that's been dug already it comes up like that black sludge and you won't find well you will find a minute but it's just hard work it's absolute horrible hard work and the reason it's all gone like black sludge is because when you feel when you dig in you fill your holes back in bits of seaweed get in there and they rot it's just it is what it is um same sort of thing when people lift the rocks over for the crabs in the spring and when they're looking for peelers and they don't put them back um the seaweed rots underneath crabs then can't go back under there and live and it's just a pain in the pain in the dairy air um right well i think i've covered maddies obviously if there's any more questions anyone wants to know about getting their own maddies then feel free to put it in the comments um so i mean as you can see all this all this area here has been dug because otherwise it would look like that loads of what rocks loads of weed this has all been turned over and it's gone it's barren and yet people oh no just dropped my maddies now um people still down here day in day out digging in the same spots they dug yesterday or the day before which i don't see the point because you've dug it over so now that bit i've just dug i won't dig it again now till next year i'll find a new spot and the reason i won't dig it again till next year is because i let the ground settle go back to where it was the sea life gets in there and cleans it all out and the maddies go in there obviously they sift through the mud and eat the weed and the rotting bits so yeah next year it'd be nice and fresh again it'd be like virgin ground again um but yeah so that's maddies that is not that to be honest it's 90% of the bait i use for flounders um the other 10% is going to be just sorted black lug like i've got in my box that you've seen a million times already so bear with me um the next part of the video will be showing you the rigs i use and how to make them they're simple it'll take minutes um the last rig videos i made were a were a complete fail no one liked them um because i just went on and on and on and on and on and i didn't explain it very well but um these are going to be short and sweet and then we're going fishing in a bit right guys well, i didn't um i didn't do the rig making bit indoors because uh, the, it was quite boring i will show you though while i'm here tonight but just quickly this is our venue this is up now this is the toilet block this is where we're fishing tonight i'm trying to keep the, the phone in my coat because it's a bit windy um yeah you can see the mud this is the sort of ground flounders love flat mud um it's always good to get here a little bit early, which we have. Um, although we're probably we still be out of cast. You've got to be careful because there's a few boys out there and stuff. You can see them just shining up the light. But flounder fishing is all quite close fishing, um, so we won't be. We'll probably be casting the distance from there to here now. Um, yeah, which is I don't know, 20 yards, 20, 20 yards ish maybe, um, and that's going to be about it. So yeah, well I'm going to go and get set up, and then I'll get to showing you some rigs and and bits and pieces like that you've already seen the maddies and how that works so yeah and that's the next bit right i'll bring you back right so i am fishing with one rod which is there behind mike the cart rod he's out in the water tide's pushing in quite quick here um so i'm just going to show you the rig that i use for flounder fishing on the medway this isn't the rig that you should use to fish anywhere for flounders because it might not work but all i've got is a simple pulley bead as a running leisure 
with a breakaway fastening attached to the bottom and then just attached to a little lead that I found in the bottom of the box. That's a little two ounce one. I think that's one of the ones I bought when I was in Spain. Um, and then for that, I've got another fast link. Oh, just try and sort it out with this light. Another fast link there. And then attached, just tied a loop in this trace. And then this is my rig that I'm using for the flounders. All it is, is um, just a simple two hook running leisure type thing with a little bit of bling, a couple of beads, a little spinning disc. Um, and they are size two Camazan B940s. Um, which are my hook of choice, that's it. Focus phone. Um, so yeah, that's that. Basically, that is just one piece of line. I tied a loop in it, cut the loop, tied a hook on each end, job done. It, it, I mean, I could probably pull that apart with my hands, but the flounders we get here on the Medway are not very big. I mean, my, my PB flounder from here is probably about 38 centimetres, which is not bad. It's, it's, it, I mean, for, the, for the Medway, it's a bloody good flounder, but anywhere else in the country, it's pretty pants. Um, but yeah, that's just that's what we get here. So what I'll do is, Mike, are you busy? No. Will you hold my phone? Yeah. For me. I'm gonna get Mike to take over. I'm gonna grab, I'm just gonna grab some bait. I know you've all seen this in the last video, but I'm doing a full documentary. So I will show you from start to finish. If you can crap on, crap under that. Right, here we have. Do you want me to? What's up, mate? Is it still recording? Yeah. Oh, here's the pink bag. The famous pink IKEA bag, as you've all seen. Let's pick out a bit of lug. There's a black lug, sorted. If um, if you want to know how these are done, how these are, how these are made, there's a video on my thing of sorted black lug, which you've all probably seen. But I mean, yeah, wipe the salt off. There's the towel, there's the head. Obviously, it's shrunk. All I do is I get rid of that towel. I break that, I break that in half, and it's tough. But inside, you can still see, look, it's wet and juicy. Look, nice black, see that black gunk coming out of it? So that's that. Break it in half because you don't need big baits. I watched a video earlier actually on flounder fishing on YouTube um, earlier today before I was waiting for Mike to come pick me up and the fellow used free king ragworm free king rag on a little small hook fishing for flounders alright he did catch a decent flounder I think it was about 40 centimetres but I mean I just thought personally the bait was ridiculous um, free king rag that's a stingray bait <laughs> it is a stingray bait isn't it yeah. there you go just nicely on the hook, like that. And then, these them lovely maddies I dug yesterday that you saw me dig. I mean, yeah, look, that's a nice size one. So, I mean, they've got loads of wriggle, absolutely loads of wriggle. Now, you don't need all them because they're such a nice size. Them ones will do. And then all I do, just quick, if you pull that up over the thing and just get it out of the way, just makes life easier. And then there's the mat. You can tell the head from the tail because the head's a thicker end. Just behind the head, not through the head because you kill it, but it's got plenty now of dangle, plenty of movement. Again, there's probably some people out there that say that they do it different now. Hopefully, if you do it different, it works here, but this is how it works for me. One, two on there. Oh, come on. Three. So there's three maddies on there, and that is absolutely plenty for the way I fish. Pulled a bit of black lug back down without putting it into your finger. And there you have it. Um, and then again with this one, just quickly, because I know you probably all just want to see a fish now, because I'm just pretty much the same. One, two, through the head, just, just below the head, three. And yeah, do you know what? As it's Christmas, one for luck. The last few maddies back in the pot, and there you go. That is going to be on the bottom. They'll be pretty close now. If you watched the flounder video beforehand, I had a flounder when me and Mike was fishing actually, and it had take, taken both hooks. It had both of these hooks, both baits in its mouth, and it wasn't it wasn't even that big. I think it was only 28 centimeters wide, wasn't it? But yeah, that's that. So that's going to be on the bottom, pretty much like that. All right, there. Hopefully, they would stick apart a little bit more. But you could put a little bit of um, rig tubing on there to get back. You know what? It's just simple fishing. And then all I do now. Right, if you want my following me for a second, sorry. There's enough water, which right, there's not enough water with us at the minute, but what I would normally do is dip these maddies in the water. 
just just give them a quick dip in the water and then what it does is it is it strengthens them up so that you can cast them without them falling to pieces but because we're only casting close in i should get away with it uh, it's literally just a gentle flip and yeah i mean that's probably 15 yards out and then when you're fishing obviously in the mud just that's it that's done um, That's that. Right, we'll bring you back in a bit. Well, guys, I've reeled in the um, the little the little plate rod, the little thingy one, and I've had the world's biggest bass. Look at him! Look, that is perfection in miniature. How he has managed to get that hook in his mouth, I will never know. Look at that! Look. Absolutely perfect. I did say to Mike that there's a good chance we might see a schoolie tonight, but I didn't think it'd be that small. Um, getting cracking bites on the cart rod again, but I've got a feeling it could be schoolie bass because of the way the bites are. They're very rattly, very... Um, they're not flounders. They're not like lungy bites. They're really, really, really rattly bites. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to get this little fellow on it, get him back, obviously, and then uh, I'll bring it back when I bring the other one in see what it is on there in a bit. Mike's just had a cracking slack liner. Got to be careful with this hole. He nearly just fell down that. That's quite a drop, that. Um, I'm trying to get in somewhere where I can record to see what he's got. See what he's got live. Down this side, Mike, isn't it? I can't see on this side of it. No, that's another school, isn't it? I've got a feeling we might not be seeing any flanders on this flounder video. Great fun of live ones, though. Oh, yeah, I mean, look at that tip on that, his rod. Look, bending with just that tiny little fish on. Well. I'm going to say that's 1-0 uh, to Mike because my bass was smaller than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to, let's get out of these woods. But yeah, this just goes to show the woods we're using. I mean, yeah, look. Look at this, look at this tiny, tiny little like, drop shot spinning rod Mike's using. Mike's caught a tree. <laughs> well, I'm going to get the other rod back out because literally you saw that bass and then Mike, was, um, Mike just looked into that other monster. Well, it's all kicking off here, but we need to see a flounder, guys. In a bit. Right, guys. Are we on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on. Um, yeah, second chuck on the carp rod. The first one I had a good bite, and I thought it was a, um, I thought it was a flounder, but it wasn't. There was nothing there. Whatever it was, Nick the Maddies. But second cast, target species achieved. Um, and for the Medway, this is an half decent flounder. Let's see where it goes, roughly. Okay. So he's that towel. 29, 30 centimeters. Yeah, I'll give it 30 yeah. centimeters, give or take. Um, so yeah, that is. That is the best possible start, to be fair, for this video. Yep. Um, Been in 10 minutes. Yeah, so yeah, 10 minutes, and we've already got a flounder and two bass. And we're literally getting bites as soon as the as soon as the, the, the bait hits the bottom. So I'm going to get this little fellow unhooked. Um, hopefully it's a nice, easy one, and he's just there. Hopefully he's not sucked it all the way down. But this black lug, look, it's... This is a, it's, it's been out there since I've been here. Look at it, it's fantastic. I love it. I won't even try, I won't even bother changing that. Well, I'm gonna have to get to go a bit deep with these. I'll probably pull it out through the gills. Um, I probably won't show you how to do that tonight. Um, but there is a way you can unhook flounders and all flatfish through the gills. But trying to do it in the wind and of the night time is gonna be a bit of a pain. I'd rather do it in the daylight. So I will show you that, but another time. Anyway, I'll bring it back when we get some more. Right, guys, I brought you back because, um, yeah, well, look, I don't know if you've just seen that. The cart rod is going divvy. Yeah, crack some cracking little bites on there. I'm pretty certain that's a flounder because it's just sharp pulls, not rattly bass bites. Um, the other rod was going just a second ago as well. Um, but I was on my phone. On, yeah, there it goes. Look, I was on my phone watching uh, Lad Baby live on YouTube get Christmas number one again. Oh, Fair play to him. Look at that. I know, yeah, it's getting mad. That's it, I'll tell you what, Mike, yeah, do you want to take this for me and I'll reel that in, hopefully? Hopefully, guys, you might see a fish, a live fish, on the carp rod. Go on, make sure you got it. Oh, if I ain't got it. <laughs> After all them bites, I'll be fuming. Carl, look at that background over there. That's St Mary's Island. No fishing allowed. No. I, think I don't think I've got this, Mike. I'm taking it nice and slow, as I always do with flounders, but I don't think it's on there. Because there's been no callbacks or nothing. No, I've missed it, I swear oh, I Oh, no. Oh look, missed oh, it. Oh he's missed it. Taking taking the maddies, but that black lug has been on there since we started and it will stay on there because there's no oh look the little one's going there. I'll tell you what, let's let's give that a sec. Can you see the bites on that one? Give it a sec. 
Right, I don't know if I remember telling you guys, but Flanders, they like a bit of movement. Oh, look, look, it's going. It's only very small. I reckon it's one of them little bass again. The Flanders like a bit of movement, so all I do is, if I give the line a little bit of tug, this is me. Are you watching, mate? Oh, just, no, go on. Just, just, give the, um, just give the line a little bit of a tug. I've just pulled it out now. Let me just tighten it up again. Nine times out of ten, if you give it a little tug while you're getting bites, it stops. If there's a fish there, it'll have a little bite back. It will have a little tiny bite back. Is it going to have a little bite back? Yep, I'm going to have that. Let's try that. Go on, see if you've got anything on that one. See if, see if I've fouled on both rods. Oh, no, I'm snagged. Oh, no. No. Oh, no, you ain't. No, 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 you're out. I'm out. Turn my head off. Oh, right, you should find them all. Oh, I think I have. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's missed that one as well. <laughs> Well, I'll bring you back. Yeah. I've had enough. I'm going on. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, mate, go. Right. In my big one, I'm getting quite a lot of bites. This keeps going slack, so I'm going to bring it in. Hopefully, we've got flounder on it. Hopefully, anyway. Yeah, hopefully, it's not like I've done a me and. Um... Oh, it's pulling his threat around his tripod. <laughs> I thought he was pulling that, yeah. We are professionals, guys. Is there? Yeah. Well, hopefully, it's a flounder and not another bass. Oh. Well, let me get in a bit. Oh, I can't. You've plunked yourself next to like a puddle. What's yeah. Oh, yeah it's, it's now raining hard as well. Yeah? Okay. Fish? Yeah. Well, I'm coming in underneath. I want to see. I've got to try not to knock this rod and all. <laughs> it went in that hole again. Oh, yeah, but. Oh, shut up. Don't say you've lost it. No, Mike. Oh, the boys are doofus. Oh, I've lost it, look. You absolute <laughs> tit. Well, I ain't showing you a fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll bring you back. Reese is on to another fish. Uh, it is. <laughs> Bend in your foot. <laughs> oh, look at that, it's another flounder. Another flounder. Oh, let me get around this way because your headlight's in it. Right. There you go, look. Happy days. Good size and all. They're not monsters. Compared to some places in the country, guys, I mean, they get them like Paul Arbor. This is a baby, um, and I'm sure there's another river down west way. I can't remember. Which. Is it the Tamar? Might be the Tamar. Again, they get some mass actual monsters in there. This one's looked quite nice, actually. This one is looked just in the jaw. Um, I say it's good. Quite, no, there it is. Turn it around the other way. You know, look, the Maddie's in the lug. Still the same lug as from the first cast. This one's a bit smaller than the last one, I think. This one is uh, oh, 29 centimetres. But yeah. Now, just quickly before you go, in the last uh, the last flounder video, I had a few comments saying this was a place. Now, it's not. I promise you guys it's not. Although it's got orange spots, very faint orange spots, it's definitely not a place. One, you can tell by the shape of the fish. It's like a diamond. See this fin? It always goes like a diamond. So it's like a, a two points on this side. Although so I've just made that. Put the head that. up this way. That's it. It's like, so you can see the fins on there are like a bit of a diamond. They're a diamond shape. On a place, they're very round. You can tell they're very round. Um, also, there is something to do with the... There's a couple of little dots on the head. Three little dots there on the head, which place haven't got. You can you can, you can can feel them. Um, and I'm pretty certain there's something about the lateral, the lateral line. line. Yeah, but I'm, different. I can't remember what that what that fact is. But honestly, guys, even though it's got orange flots, it's definitely a flounder. Let's chuck this one back. Yeah, let me come around this way so I can film it. I'll need to say something else while we're at it with the flounders. What, can you get a picture of that? Yeah. Push the picture button while it's recording. Yep, go on. Lovely. Go on. Right, just quickly, guys, before you go, as it's Christmas, I went in to see my favourite tackle shop owner the other day, Lewis. Turn your head off. I'm gonna. Um, and gave me my Christmas present. So a nice new hoodie from Lewis, from Medway Tackle, with my logo on it, and then their logo on the back. Can you see that, Mike? Yep. Medway tackle. Um, now they sell these, they sell them without the fish hunter logo. Look, I'm not trying to big up the shop or sell the hoodies, but as they gave it to me as a Christmas present, um, if anyone wants a hoodie with Medway tackle on it, fish hunter on it, get in contact with Lewis or Mike um, at the shop. Um, 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 the phone number I will get for you. Um, and yeah, you can order one any colour, any size you like if you wanted one. But yeah, I thought I'd just better mention that because I mean, it's a nice thing for me to do. I only went in there to go and buy some maggots. Um, and that's that's another story. We will get to that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a massive foul. Um, 
so yeah, and he presented me with that. So thanks again for for, for Medrad tackle, um, and and hopefully we can all work together again next year because they're absolutely fantastic since I've taken over the shop. They've got everything in there I need, and obviously I'll get their blacks in that for them. So yeah, what? Right, I'll best get that rod baited up and get get another flounder. Yeah, and then wait for Mike to get one. Can yeah, son. Try in a bit. <laughs> Some really, really nice bites on this rod. I've got a feeling it might be another bass, but they are really, really going for it. So I bought you back. You got a feeling you've missed it again. You yeah. missed it again, <laughs> Can I have? mate. I, I think you should get rid of them really, really tiny hooks <laughs> and put tank on a little bit bigger. Mike's hooks. Mike's, Mike's fishing a completely different setup to me. What you got on this one? Is this the one where you got that really, really long flapper on? Yeah, it's like a continental rig. No rig. Yeah. And I seem to be missing quite a lot of fat yet, so yeah, we'll... Funnily enough, we're not in the continent, we're on the Medway. I reckon I reckon I should give Mike one of my rigs and show him how to catch flounders. What? Good lads. Right, guys, we'll bring you back when Mike's fishing properly. <laughs> <laughs> right guys, um just brought me back. Well Mike's got you. My little rod, you can see the line. That was slack. That was tight. That was I've just had the most amazing bite. I was standing over there watching it. The, the tip of the rod was over the wall. But I haven't had nothing since. Yeah, no, no, there, it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Oh, I'm going to have to have a go with that. Come on. I don't think that's a flounder, I think that's a bass. That was a crazy bite. Give it a little pull towards me. Your line's still a bit slack, isn't it? Yeah, I've just felt that I don't think there's any way. I think I've missed that, guys. Oh, well, let's have a go, isn't a penny, or a pound. Oh no, it's on no, there. No, there you go. It's on there. But what is it? Is it a flounder or is it a bass? Let me come over here so I can see a bit better. Oh, I do hope it's a flounder. No, it's a bass. Come on, what is it? It's a... Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh no, time to definitely go We're home. going home. Oh, oh no. <laughs> No! How did he find us? Oh, you need to be over the other side of them boys. Oh, that, that's that's just ruined my night. <laughs> ruined my night. Guys, I'll bring you back, maybe. Yep. Right, guys, that is us. Um, so there you have it. Flounder fishing, start to finish. Um, the maddies, the rigs I use, um, obviously the bait, um, where we fish. So there wasn't many flounders I know but whiting beat us to it um, after you saw me reading that whiting I was getting double shots and that's just what it goes like the tide's now turning it's getting hard to hold bottom and there's also a load of weed and all sorts of other bits and bobs flowing back down the river and catching our line so it's a bit of a pain so we've called it um, again thanks for watching guys um, oh just quickly before I say start to finish um, we started with digging bait now we're now finishing leaving where we're fishing how we found it there's no rubbish here, there's no nothing. So to anyone anyone that didn't know we were fishing here, it, it, no one would know because there's no evidence of anyone being here, which is that everyone should always leave their fishing. So I know most people do, but yeah, anyway, that's enough of whinging. So <clears throat> thanks for watching. Keep liking, keep subscribing, keep the support. I'm absolutely loving it, guys. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, and socials, I'm on Facebook as Fish Hunter UK. Um, so try and find it if you can. I'm on Instagram, Fish Hunter UK. I've even just joined Twitter um, because I keep hearing all these celebrities and people talking about tweets and chirps and all that old malarkey. So I joined it. I ain't got a clue how it works. I haven't got a clue. At the minute, I've just got some football players on there and Pierce Morgan because he cracks me up. Um, other than that, that's about it. So yeah, if anyone wants to come find me on there, then yeah, that'd be great. Um, um, it is today is the 21st of December. Um, I am planning on getting one more trip in before Christmas. It'll probably be for rays or something like that. Um, because other than that, it's whiting flounders or rays to catch in the southeast, and I ain't got time to go anywhere else. So, cheers all. I'll see you soon.